Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Play. Really? <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Playing Devil's Advocate. I am your host, Miss Kiki, the consummate provocateur, and tonight we are continuing our Man Crush March series, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to get into it, but before I do any of that, I need to take care of some of the light housekeeping. Y'all know how we do around here. For those of you guys who just may be joining us, we are here each and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Central, and 10 p.m. to you guys on the East Coast. Like I said, this is our Man Crush March series, and we are um, bringing in the fellas. We are celebrating the fellas. So if you want to be a part of the conversation, you can do so in many ways. There are no excuses for you not to be a part of this conversation. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash playing devil's advocate. You can click the link there and you can watch us live on YouTube if you're not listening to us in any other way. Also, while you're there, on the, uh, and you can post your comments there on Facebook and we'll get back to your comments. You can send us a tweet at PDA underscore Miss Kiki. That's PDA underscore M-S-K-I-K-I. -I, and we'll get your comment on air as soon as we can. And if you're watching us on YouTube, we have an interactive chat room right there. Um, where I'm looking at people already filing in, asking questions and talking and chattering. So um, make sure you go on over there and comment with us. Um, I wanted to tell you guys, we will leave the stream up live. Typically, we'll close it down after it's um, after we've done it, but we're going to leave it up for you guys to be able to watch it throughout the week. Um, I have one, a couple of reminders I need to remind you of. Make sure that you uh, go out and purchase yourself a copy of my book, The Other Woman Code of Conduct, What Every Other Woman Should Know, and then to, if you have not purchased this yet, you can get it on iTunes. Just type in my name, Kiki Richardson. It's just that simple. Or you can go to kikirichardson.com and get it. You, while you're there at kikirichardson.com, you can find out about everybody here on the show, guest hosts, experts, all that stuff right there, kikirichardson.com. And if you're in the Atlanta area this weekend, make sure that you come out, check me out. I will be hosting a sexy art exhibit called Noir Erotica, and the theme is Fifty Shades of Grey, so I think you already know what time it is. Um, there will be some interesting things happening. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. If you follow me on Periscope, you will have seen me post a uh, flyer for it. I'm going to show you guys on my iPad. Can you see that? <laughs> if you can see that, that's the flyer for it. So uh, go to eventbrite.com and search for Noir Erotica, N-O-I-R-E Erotica, and uh, get yourself some tickets because we'll be at the House of Blended Ink. All right? I think that's it. I think I've covered every single thing. It's time for me to bring in my crew that's going to ride shotgun with me this week. Um, we're one man short, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, we have two, and those two are enough. Ladies and gentlemen, she, she hails from my hometown, the Windy City. Um, some of you know her. Some of you love her. Um, she coined the phrase, lube is for amateurs, so you got to know she's a fallen angel. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcome this sporty, spunky angel. <laughs> Girl, what's going on? Hey, how are you? I am wonderful, lady. Are you excited about tonight's show? Absolutely. I am. I am. Let me tell y'all something. Man Crush March is my favorite time to do the show, other than my birthday. 
right? In case y'all didn't know, that is my favorite time because we get to get some of my favorite people on air with us. Um, we get a chance to get some eye candy every now and again. And um, ladies, y'all can thank me for this later. But uh, this week is love and romance. And I called on, I called in the big dogs for y'all tonight. Like I said, I'll be accepting gifts. I take cash, gift cards, all that stuff. <laughs> Flowers, yeah, candy. Right day. now, I take some Girl Scout cookies and thin mints, you know. Um, but first up, he hails from my hometown as well. We go way, way back. I think it was like 1990-something when we met. But I think we originally met in another lifetime. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know him from... So food, you know him from living single, you know him from deliver us from evil, and my favorite of all things, uninvited guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming my good friend, actor, director, artist, author, everything you want to think about it, Mr. Mel Jackson. What's up, Daddy O? Bless you to the family. Peace and blessings to you, my dear. Long time no see. And we still don't see you. You're not on the stream, right? <laughs> I know the people that are watching the stream is yeah. like, where is he? Where is he? We want to see him. Y'all, he's doing a whole bunch of things right now. So, uh, Mel, you ready to yeah. take this journey with us tonight? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. I look forward to the build. All right. Um, let me bring on your other male counterpart that will be joining you tonight in this conversation. Um he said he was going to send me a bio, but he didn't. Y'all know my team. They know how to find the dirt. But I was going to tell you, he must be like linked in to Obama or something because they couldn't find no dirt on him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, is, he is shiny as a brand new penny. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a former NFL player. He played for the Detroit Lions, the Kansas City Chiefs. He also played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He hails from his hometown of Pitts. No, I'm, I'm about to mess that up. You're not from Pittsburgh. Maybe you are. <laughs> and um, y'all might Y'all might have recently seen him on this season of Selling It in the ATL. Um, if you are into uh, charity and charitable works, he is one of those guys who's got his hand in a whole bunch of things. He is a philanthropist and an all-around good guy. He jumped up, and, and uh, I got to give him a high five for, for just uh, joining in on such last notice. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Mr. Eddie Drummond. What's up, Daddy-O? How's it going? How's it going? I'm pleased to be here. I'm pleased to be here, too, but I just want to let you know two things before we get started. One, he's <laughs> shaking his head like, oh, Lord. <laughs> well, actually, it's three things. One, okay, one is... Um, you caused an uproar in my inbox, mm. so you, you, I'm going to get you for that. Um, two, you got to watch out for Sporty. She's on the prowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How you doing, Sporty? How you doing? I'm doing much better right now, sir. Yes, I am. Is a, she is a mess. And you know what? You don't feed the animals. <laughs> don't feed the animals, okay? All right, so... Um, is there, first of all, before we get started, is there anything, Mel and you, Eddie, that I may have left out about you guys that you want to make sure that everybody knows about before we get into this conversation? I'll start with you first, Mel. Let's do it. Something that I want them to know about? That I missed, I that about. I didn't say. I don't, I don't know. As it, as, it relates, as it relates to relationships, I've been in a couple. <laughs> no, silly about you, crazy. You all weirdo. I can't even fool with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But about me, uh, no. I guess no. Let's keep keep going. I'm okay. an artist, you know. Okay, the book. All right. Well, what about you, Eddie? Anything you want to share with anybody before uh, with us before we get started? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Just just get the word out there about uh, I'm on the board of the NFL Players Association. I'm a member of the NFL alumni which are both volunteer organizations in the city. A lot of people don't know about them, but there are hundreds and hundreds of NFL players out there that are just a phone call away that will support whatever you're doing. 
Um, so when you get a chance, check out the NFL PA and NFL alumni. Um, get some information so we can come help you out. And I also heard a little birdie told me you were uh, at, uh, Ebony Magazine's Atlanta's issue uh, most eligible bachelor of 2015. Yeah, yeah, that was towards the end of the year uh, last year. I think there was about uh, 10 finalists. And yeah, they, they nominated me as uh, Atlanta's most eligible bachelor, well, one of them. So, I, you know, I was blessed and humbled by uh, doing it. But at the same time, um, it, was, it was exciting to be in Ebony Magazine. And really, my mom and all the older ladies in my family, they they got excited like I just made it to the NFL. <laughs> so so you made two of their dreams come true. You went into the NFL, yeah. and then you made it into Ebony Magazine. All right, that's perfect. Well, that's a perfect segue into what I wanted to go uh, into. Um, since we're talking about love and romance, uh, as of last year, you were an eligible bachelor. Is that still the same? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Still single, no kids, uh, just married to business right now. Ooh. So usually, well, usually when I'm <laughs> usually on when I'm on my single moments, I usually just get you know overwhelmed with business and just and just stay busy as possible. You know, it keeps me out of trouble, keeps my pockets right. You know, keeps me in line. Okay. And Mel, currently, what's your uh, status? I'm not in the committee of the exclusive situation at this time. Oh, so you just out boning? <laughs> <laughs> you just running around, bang, 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 ski, ski, ski. Is that what's going on? I'm living, loving, laughing, and learning. Yeah, That's whatever. I know you, man. <laughs> I it like him. Uh, I like it, Mel. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, so there are quite a few things that people wanted to know about you guys. Um, like I said, when I posted that you guys were going to be on the show, my inbox was flooded. We've already answered one of your questions, and yes, they're both single. So um, there you have it. Um, my my question, and then I'm gonna go to Sporty after I ask get you guys to answer this question because I know she has a lot that she want to ask you guys. In terms of tonight's topic being love and and romance, what do you define love as, and then what do you define romance as? And again, I'll start with Mel. That'll be our order for tonight. I'll start yeah. with Mel, and then I'll go to uh, you, Eddie, unless y'all want to switch it up. Mel got it. Okay. Okay. What you, so you want to know about love? What? Yeah. What? What is that? If If you had to tell somebody what love is, what, how would you describe it? I don't, I don't know. I, I I mean, I would probably keep it simple. I say love is the the back and forth energy between two two beings open to give as well as receive. And that was simple. And what? Yeah. And then romance. Yes. Uh, romance. Uh, uh, that's the activity surrounded. That's the creative expression of that love. Okay, the creative expression of that love. Yeah, yeah, uh, just the creative, the, the romance is the creative okay. expression of that, that feeling which we call love. Okay. Eddie? Me, I, I just personally think that true love is uh, two people basically coming together and forming one. It's basically you can't live with that person and you think about that person more than yourself. You, you value their lives over your lives and, and that, that, until you get that, that's true love. Okay. And what about romance? Romance is lost as far as the, the whole general population, as far as men go, um, especially down here in Atlanta, um, in, in areas that, I, that I've lived in and noticed. Um, romance is just basically treating each other like kings and queens. And then uh, from there, everything falls into place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's my yeah, question thanks, for Sporty. both of you. <laughs> Hey, Mel. <laughs> hey, what's up? How are you? Long time no talk to, my dear. Okay. It's all love. Building balance, respecting and refining. Congratulations on uh, the show and the success of the show. Oh, you're so awesome. Okay, now I want you to answer this question, but do not give me your, you know, your, keep it simple for me because, you know, everybody is not as, super fine intelligent as you are and they may not understand the dissertation that you give when you respond to us so I want you to do something called KISS and keep it simple okay so my question to you is absolutely 
<laughs> I no want you <laughs> tell me, right. Tell me, I, I want you to plan a romantic. Go ahead, 40. Plan a romantic evening from start to finish for your first date. She said, plan a romantic evening uh, for your first date from beginning to end. Oh, you, so I should, I should say what I would, what I would want her to do or what? <laughs> no, what you, <laughs> what you would do. <laughs> I hear cousin Chan oh. laughing. She's like, ah! yeah, no, what you would do. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. <laughs> Represent, man. <laughs> I want to think about it. You want to think about it? He said he want to think about it. Eddie. Okay, well let me let me rephrase the question for Eddie. He, he said let Eddie. Yeah, rephrase it. Okay, let me rephrase the question for you, Eddie. Tell me how you would plan our first date from start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See me and me. I'm gonna go ahead and answer it. Oh, me and Mel on the same wavelength. <laughs> me and Mel on the same wavelength. So for for a really nice day, you gotta prepare for that. You know, right. you, you gotta have some planning and everything be right. But just off the humbug, like, hey, you just hit me up, like, hey, let's go out tonight, get some stuff ready. You know, you know, it's first and foremost, never show up empty-handed. Okay. I don't I don't understand why guys don't do it. You never ever show up empty handed. And to go overboard you can get her picked up. It's not that expensive and take her, you know, somewhere else to take her to the place. Or you pick her up, always open the door. Chivalry's dead with all these young guys coming up. I don't know what's wrong with them. But always be cordial, always be respectful. Um then from there, you know you gotta eat. First and foremost, you gotta eat. Cause the girls, if you don't, if you don't eat, these women are gonna be cranky for the rest of the night. <laughs> that would be I'm me. Let you know. That would be me. So you better eat, and you better go somewhere that has fabulous desserts. Cause desserts would get them. The wine and the desserts, that's what heats everything up. Have the right. That's gonna have the conversation going well, and your conversation better be on point. Because most, most of the date, the rest of the day is going to be determined from that dinner, that dessert, and your conversation in that intimate moment. And from there, I'm a fun person. So we going, I'm going to think of something that I've never done that I wanted to do so we can do it together. It's going to be stuff like horseback riding, jet skiing. Uh, We're we doing something that you've never done before that we can do that you will remember for the rest of your life. Eddie. And then from there, from there, the rest of the date just goes on and it flows. It's so easy. <laughs> Eddie, I'm I'm just gonna That's say it. right now, my dear, mm -hmm. you're gonna be getting people uh, hitting you up. You realize, yeah. right? But this is this is standard grown up stuff. So I don't. Know I'm, why I'm just standard because, but here's stuff. the thing, though. Here's the interesting thing about I that. Was, yeah, Eddie, 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 I was I was just gonna say uh, Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> You do incredible. <laughs> I, I gotta work on my. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what's interesting? Nah, about see, it, though. He's, a, he's trying to take the heat off of himself. That's what he's doing. Right. No, but here's the thing. You talk about how chivalry is dead and how you know it's not happening. And the reason why you will probably be flooded, you know, one of the reasons you will be flooded with people, you know, like yo, I heard him on your show, blah blah blah. You know, he's still single. Can you, you know, introduce us? That kind of thing. While I'll be getting that information, people coming in to me with that is because there's so little of that there's so little of that thought being put into it you know what I mean there's not a lot of conversation that's happening prior to this day where you're taking mental notes um, and saying, oh okay her favorite color is pink okay all right she likes stuff that sparkles okay you know you are making those mental notes so when you do show up you have something pink or you got something you know what I mean it's just one of those things where I, I think it's interesting that Go ahead, Mel. And and I'll build on that with you. I'll build on that with you. Like nowadays, even with the dating thing, like you know, I mean, there's a lot of different social networks and stuff out there that where you can go in and even just do a casual observation, you can you can find things about you know the individual. You know, I'm not talking about like Facebook stalking and none of that craziness, but just talking about you know figuring things out about the individual and, and then coming up and being uh, thoughtful. I think that there's an opportunity to do that a lot more nowadays. As opposed to the old days where you 
on several different dates in order to figure certain things out in order to be creative. I think that there's a way that you can be creative now uh, uh, utilizing the technology. You know, it's interesting. I had uh, somebody ask me out, you know, to, for dinner to take me to or to actually cook me dinner. And when I got there, you know, they were like, okay, what would you like to drink? And y'all know I don't drink alcohol, right? So um, they were like, okay, do you want sparkling apple cider or ginger ale? I'm like, why are you all in my business? How do you know that? <laughs> I'm like, how do you know which one? What is my drink of choice? I pay attention. I saw some of your pictures, you know, that kind of thing. You know, and I'm like, oh, all right, okay. Good looking out, partner. You know, that kind of thing. So. But Eddie, but Eddie, just did not take the heat completely off myself. You know, I would say that the first day would, would probably be something with going out someplace where there's where there's an uh, the, the ambience is where we can listen to some live music because I like live music. But I mean, real chill live music where you get a, a moment to, to get a chance to actually talk to one another, one another, and get to know each other. And then maybe from there, you know, someplace else to, to again walking around, talking, building, and then getting something to eat. And then from there, maybe some uh. Uh, uh, whatever else is going on from there, some dancing or something like that, where we can get, continue to be creative. And then from there, you know, then whatever whatever happens after that point, after, you know, a couple of drinks, <laughs> and whatever goes on for that night, we'll, we'll just let it, we'll just play it from there. We know what that means now. Uh, yeah. but those, Chill hard. That's right. Chill hard in the next thing. Hope it's just to be creative. Hang on. Hang on, Mel. For those of you guys who just may be joining us, this is Playing Devil's Advocate. I am your host, Miss Kiki, the consummate provocateur. And today we are in thir our third week of Man Crush March. And we are joined by some already, we're finding out, phenomenal men um, for our love and romance show tonight. So we're being joined by actor, producer, director Mel Jackson and philanthropist. Uh, Entrepreneur, former athlete Eddie Drummond, also a uh, former eligible bachelor. Well, I shouldn't say former because he currently still is. So yeah. uh, <laughs> he currently still is until somebody did, takes. Did, did something happen in the chat room that I didn't hear about? Right, right. Did somebody snatch him up off the market yeah, right. already? <laughs> Don't worry, like, Wow, that was, that was working on it. Working on it. Right. <laughs> no, uh, we got a couple people standing in line for both of y'all, so don't you worry your pretty little head about it. If you want to ask these wonderful gentlemen some questions, you can post our Facebook wall at facebook.com slash playing devil's advocate. And also, while you're there, um, if you click in the link and you're watching us on YouTube, post your comments in our YouTube chat room. We are interacting with you guys. Um, and for you guys who are watching me, Eddie, if you see me look over to the side, I'm not ignoring you, baby. I'm actually looking at what people are saying to me in the chat room. Um, and you can send us a tweet at PDA underscore Miss Kiki, PDA underscore M-S-K-I-K-I. -K -I. Sporty, you were trying to jump in there. Yes, yes I, I was. was. Because, because my... Um, Inbox seems to be jumping off right now. Um, I've gotten one comment that says, "You're not single. Leave him alone." Um, oh, the other one, yeah, I'm I'm being checked. Hey, you know you. I know they need to stop. So, but that prompted another question for me to go in addition to what I was just asking. So, seriously, both of you, okay? Um, Mel, you know, I've seen how people react to you in public, and they kind of like just flock to you and they're like, okay, well, who is he and, and, you know, how you get to meet him and all of that stuff. When you meet a young lady that you're actually interested in, how do you know she's interested in you and not the person that you portray or, or they're not interested in you just because of who you are? Who is that for? That's for Mel. You That's for both of them, but I asked Mel first. Yeah, she she wants to know when you meet them, how do you know they just, they, they want Mel. They want, uh, I'm not going to call you by your government name. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying, but it, listen, this this is how I, I, I don't think about that like that. I don't just, first of all, I don't, I don't just assume that everybody has seen my work. You know, I, I, I meet people just like, Everybody else meets them, and, and you want to get to know them. But and whether somebody seen you, you know uh, uh, my work, you know or not, it's it's almost the same as that. If somebody saw you, you know, as the post you you're the postman, and then you know they see you in your regular clothes, and you want to say hello. So it's just like I, I just kind of approach it for the moment, and I build with them. Know whether they they like me for my work or not, I still want to see what the moment is. Okay. And what about you, Eddie? How do you handle 
fans that want well, to well, well, I'm not a, a a super sex star like male is to the woman, so I don't have groups of girls, you know, just yes, and everything I'm like that. I'm you in public, lies. lies it's it's different though. Lies and garbage. Uh oh, oh, wait a minute, cousin Chan <laughs> just jumped in on that one. She said lies, lies, and, garbage, lies, and, garbage. lies and garbage. We just seen it in action. Lies and garbage, but go ahead. <laughs> that smile says it right there. No, That's it's, it's it just right not there. though. I mean, come on, because being a sports player, especially football, a lot a lot of females aren't going to know who you are <laughs> just are you off kidding? of football, unless they're really, really, like, looking at your stats and how much you get paid and all that type of stuff. There are girls like that. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to have, you know, like a group of girls at a table like, oh, yeah, that's Eddie Drummond from the Detroit Lions, unless we were in, like, Detroit or something like that, you know, because that's the only place <laughs> they really, really, really know me at. Okay. So well, when it comes to that, I'm not really like overwhelmed with it. It's really just on general purposes of the or they're hearing me, and so and, and I'm just a you know that type of guy. I'm for, I'm you know friends with everybody, you know, especially when I first first meet you. So it's going to be a comfortable situation. So but it's never really like even with sports athletes, it's not like groupies and all that type of stuff and the waiting. They're not waiting in the rooms for you and all that stuff. It doesn't go down like that with football. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. Um, we got them. We got them. I'm not gonna lie. We have them. We have them. Where's my flag? flag? I need my flag because I'm about to throw a flag on this. Tell you. Girl, look. Here, here you go. <laughs> I'm about to throw a flag on this here, Eddie. Now you know. Ask. Ask any athlete, from an entertainer to an athlete, who has it way worse. Entertainers have it five times worse than athletes. I'm telling you. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's where I've lived. Maybe it's where I live. I, oh, I grew up in Chicago. Man, no. I grew up. Man, knows. I, I grew up in Chicago. I lived in LA for 15 years. So maybe it's where I've been that I, yeah. I, I, I it's different. It's different. But I've seen it all. And let me. Here's a quick question. We had some stuff come in through the chat room. Is which is worse, the girl groupies or the boy groupies? I know this don't have nothing to do with love or romance, but which is worse? Both. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like dudes. I mean, I'm and they straight dudes. I'm just saying, I've had dudes like push me out of the way to try and get to, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. yo, hold on, partner. See, we, we don't really notice it because we're not paying attention to guys. Right. Of like course. personally. So we're right. not noticing grill male groupies or anything like that towards us. Right. But we see it in action towards other people. And the first time I ever saw it was when I moved to Atlanta about four and a half years ago. And like you said, I was out at a night spot. The entertainer, like the entertainer, came in, not the uh -oh. sports athlete. <laughs> Everybody went crazy, even the guys. Guys were pushing girls out of the way to get pictures, and I was just like, "Where they do that at?" But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. Here's the question. They want to know from you guys, since romance is a dying breed, how would you or what would you try to do in order to teach the next generation the art of romance? Mm. Mel, you're up first. Go ahead, Mel. Go ahead, Mel. So, so with the art of romance, I, I don't know. I think that, you know, I, I, I don't know that uh, because I think it's relative to who you're talking to with the, with the different female about what, what is and what is not romantic. But I, I know a good base that I would tell them to start with is to uh, listen. Start with learning to listen. That's the, I think that's one of the most romantic things that a man can do to get, can actually listen to her and, and not just wait for an opportunity to talk with, but uh, listen to her and then, and then show that you listen to her by, you know, uh, using what she said when you, when you, when you build with it. You know, that, that's what I would start at, but I don't know anything from there. I'd have to leave that up to Eddie. Okay. So you, Poppy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I grew up with all women in the home, so older sister, three younger sisters, single parent mom. So it's a lot of beating up boyfriends, being, you know, the man of the house type deal. So I grew up differently from everyone else. But I, I think young guys need to learn about women and the history of women, period, in the high school level. Because college, I took, just because I had women, you know, affecting my life so much, I took classes, you know, feminist classes and everything. I took two of them you know, art studies classes. And um, and it really helped me learn about what women has been through through history, the double standard, 
especially black women. You know what I'm saying? They they were knocked down and they, they were basically beneath black men. You know what I'm saying? Like so they got drugged way worse than men. So mm-hmm. if these young people learn the history of women and what they went through, then I think that things will start changing a little bit because they're just out here with the same generation of women, the same age they are, and they're just as crazy as them. So it, it's it's kind of messed up right now. So but hopefully the, you know these young guys can get it together in this generation, you know, could turn. Um, and then start start supporting and um, you know realizing the worth of a woman. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What are the questions that came? In? No, no, I would. Oh, 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 hey, you know what? Hey, key, key, I would. I would also. I would add to that. You know, with like romance is that you know, uh, learn the art of dating. That's what I would say. Learn to tell them for romance, the art of dating. Like I yeah. think that that's that. I think actual dating the way we used to before. I think that would actually be considered romantic nowadays. Okay. <laughs> <Pretty good. laughs> no. All right. Um, yeah, because I think that dating, dating is more into something else that's different. And I can't say that I, I, I don't, you know, like when you adapt, I, I, I am enjoying some of the things that have come a, along with this, this new change uh, and, and being open with sexual, you know, the women being open more to express to you what, but but uh, sexually, what they want, you know, thanks to people like you know, uh, uh, like shows like PDA. <laughs> you know, like, Don't blame me. <laughs> Don't blame me for the sexual you know what revolution. I'm what, I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But I'm saying that it is a lot different to where uh, people are willing to get a little more intimate with you physically before they'll get intimate with you mentally or. You, uh, is that right? You, you know what I mean? They, right. Before they'll let you know, they'll, they'll let you in there, you know. Right. Well, it's, it's what whatever. I, you know what I call it, Mel. I call it mental course. It's that, it's yes, that, exactly. it's that exactly. intercourse intellectually that you're having with them mentally that will then open up the other stuff <laughs> for you to then now enter. Um, and, and, and most of these guys I've noticed don't even know how to have a real conversation. Um, Everything is, you know, you know what I'm saying, and it's like, no, I don't. You haven't said anything yet. I, I, I don't know. Or it's so much slang in there, and I, y'all know I'm square. I have a translator. I have no idea what the slang is. So, you know, you got to be able to at least communicate effectively. Um, Eddie, you, you, did you have something you want to say before I, um, give you something that the people want to know? No, nah, no. Nah, he, he basically, you know, added to it, and, and okay, and, and as far as dating go, I mean, like you said. Um, in some instances, roles have changed as far as dating, and it, and just to see women, uh, basically pursue guys persistently, and I can see if the feeling is mutual and the guys just kind of stand off. But it's some guys out here that don't want nothing to do with these girls, and they just really just fighting over them. Mm-hmm. And you're just like you just looking, standing back, looking, and shaking your head. Well, but that, like like me and Mel said though, you know, hopefully hopefully something happens to where you know where it clicks into these these kids' heads and uh, what well, is new generation coming up? You know, me and Mel, you know, we older, so we we already got our stuff together. Well, but he older. Guys, I don't know about you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Mel. I tried, Mel. <laughs> he older. Damn. No, I'm not just kidding. Um, that late, that leads me actually to the next question that one of the listeners wanted to know from you guys. They wanted to know, um, you know, in terms of relationships and what kind of things that you look for in women um, when it comes to and, – and one of the things they were asking was, are you turned off or, you know, kind of like backing off of a woman who is more assertive, who approaches you? Not that she's hounding you or she's a sweat hog, but what are the, you know, are you, does that repel you or is it kind of, mis, you know, mysterious to you? Like, let me see what's up with her. And then follow that with what kind of women you like. Um, Mel, you're up first. <laughs> All right. Okay. The first question is that oh, oh, a woman that's a little more assertive. Yes. That's nothing. That, that you know, that's absolutely <laughs> You know, I want, you know, put in anything, you know, a woman should be who she is. You get it? Sometimes you, you never know when you meet a certain kind of energy, you know, that, that interplay between the energy that what's going to, uh, I don't know, make you interested or, or capture your attention uh, that particular day. Uh, and, and then as far as what what attracts me in a woman, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't 
think it starts off as a spiritual thing where it's that, that thing where, you know, it's that spark, whatever that is, you know, and then from there, I think uh, it moves uh, uh, to uh, intellectual kind of thing because that's like you said with the mental course. I love the interplay back and forth with conversation because, of course, inter- uh, conversation used to be called intercourse. So uh, I, I like to have fun with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so and then from that, you know. Okay. Um, it's, it's funny, well, uh, a sense of humor. Love a sense of, lo- love a sense of humor. That's incredible, you know. And, uh, yeah, a person that's, uh, you, you know, that, that uh, knowledge of self. Okay. Y'all got no y'all hope y'all taking notes, ladies. Eddie. Oh, me. I know I know a lot of, you know, especially African American guys don't like it, but I just love strong women that got their own opinions that ain't going to let me walk over them that don't need a man. I that that's well, that's the first thing that kind of attracts me. A woman to, always is a woman that a that don't need a man as far as to support them. Okay. All right, because I was about to say, a woman always yeah. needs a man. <laughs> we were made uh, financially, to together. <laughs> financially, you know, so I, I'm more towards women that, I mean, even if, you know, she's in a transition, but she has to have dreams and goals and aspirations. I don't want no trophy. You know, I don't want a trophy wife that's just going to sit there. Nah, that's going to be too much time on her hands. It's going to cause problems. So I want a powerful woman that can support herself, stand on her own too, Okay. And me, you don't have to be the most beautiful woman in the world as long as we're compatible and I love you to the fullest. I think you're the beautiful, most beautiful girl in the world. So all these guys out here just shopping for these trophies, that's why they're getting in so many situations. Mm-hmm. You got to know the person, love the person, and be able to deal with everything that's going on. And if she ain't strong and got her own stuff going on, you already, you're going you're gonna to see down the road what's going to happen. Okay. Well, here- and you know what? And I would, I would just, uh, I would, I would just uh, to, to simplify mine even, even more. I would just say that nowadays it's really about it's more, it's more uh, on the level of when you when you're going into something where you want it to be a, a full term committed exclusive situation. It's energetic as opposed to aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's that's, uh, that's a long haul. Okay. okay, we got. <clears throat> Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry, Angel. Don't let me get in between you and your man. I'm sorry that I'm getting in between yo, 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 vanilla and chocolate sandwich. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I, all I wanted to say real quick before she continued, Eddie, is I have my own everything. That's all. Oh. <laughs> is she running? All right. She done threw her head in the ring. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> That's not a subtle point she's making. I just wanted. Right, it was subtlety totally, completely went out the window. <laughs> okay, let me let me get you guys some of the questions that the uh, we lost Eddie's picture. Um, <clears throat> I got you. I'm coming back on. Okay, let me and tell him to stop texting you. Damn it, you on air? No. <laughs> Here's some of the questions that came in from the chat room. They said, um, "Question: Everyone has loved and lost. So how do you or would you get over loving and losing her?" Mm-hmm. Nice question. Well, was that the bell? <laughs> no. <laughs> repeat that. Repeat it. They said everyone has loved and lost. Hey, go. Oh, he said, "Hey, go, Mel." Everyone has loved and lost. So, how would you, or how do you get over loving her and losing her? Oh. Yes, it's you, Mel. If everyone is love and love, how would I get over uh, loving? Um, first of all, uh, I think any, when you're in a relationship when it's committed, it's built upon a friendship. So, you know, get over losing her, that, that depending on how much time you guys were together, that it depends. Uh, what would I do? Uh, I don't know. I, I think back into my other love, which is my work, first. And then and, and just like she came as a result of me doing that and trying to... Uh, Realize my potential. Somebody else will. Okay. I mean, I'm just not 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 in a negative way. I'm just saying that I would just go up, go with the flow because even with your friend, even if she doesn't want to be with you, then if you, 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 you really if she's really your friend, you, you allow her to, to to go where where it brings the joy, and you would have to you know to do the same. Okay. And it and it, and it works out. Alrighty. Go about. It's on you, Eddie. 
Uh, basically, me, I just get busy as possible. That because uh, you know I've been single, I've been single for about two years now. Not that kind of busy. Not that kind of busy. Crazy. Business busy. He he ain't doing what you do. He ain't doing what he do. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, yeah. So so I just get busy as possible, especially with business. Um, basically, just like Mel said, uh, it's, just, it's just something you know, out of sight, out of mind type deal. And I feel like that's probably the most common thing that people do, you know, is is to get everything off off of your mind, um, especially when you love someone and it's serious love. Then, um, you know, what I'm saying it, it's really hard to get over. But like I said, you know, get busy, work on that business, make that make that a positive moment in your life to where you can focus on yourself for a little bit of time until you feel like you can jump back onto that horse. Okay. And um, two questions before we got to do the drink of the week. One of the questions is, um, they said, Eddie, you have mentioned several times about you get busy um, and you're really busy while you're single. How, how do you then find someone if you're busy with work? Uh, own all the business that you're doing so you can make your own hours. <laughs> there it is. Exactly. Right. That's the truth. Man. Entrepreneurship. All right, uh, and then the last question. Yeah, I, I second. I, I second. I second that emotion. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the last question before we go into our drink of the week is: uh, Are you taken aback more by a woman who just wants to have sex or one who wants to date? Mel. You mean like better? Are you? <laughs> Which one do we like more? It was saying? classic. He was like the one we like better. <laughs> Which one are you taking aback? Oh, okay, okay. Right. Which right. one are you taking aback? Is it the one that's you know who wants to date? You know the one who says I'm dating on purpose, or the one who's like, look, let's just go ahead and knock this out. Mel. Well, I'm, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't always make the assumption that I'm always. I'm always, I always feel abundantly blessed if a woman decides to, you know, to cultivate the creative sexual energy with me. So, you know, I'm always thinking the fact when, you know, it's just a, it's a moment that I, I want to give thanks and praise every single time. I don't know about Eddie. <laughs> Repeat that. I couldn't hear you. Repeat that. Say it again. He, he said he's, he's abundantly thankful whenever a woman wants to uh, share with him in that way. So he just gives thanks. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that was funny. I'm taking, I'm taking it back to the point of humility. I'm just humbled. Every, I don't care how many times they never get to hold me. I'm just humbled. And sometimes, Man. I think sometimes I have to stop that Denzel tear from glory. From <laughs> down. Not the Denzel tear from glory. Oh, you are on God. mute. I am putting you on mute. Hey, go on, Mel. Go ahead, Eddie. <laughs> ah, it, ain't, ain't nothing for me to say. I'm a man, and we generally think like Mel is thinking right now. I'll take it. Hey, it is. It, that's what it is. <laughs> but but you, I will say, I will say nowadays. I mean, you know, that it, it would be interesting if that somebody wants to like traditionally date. I think dating is like a, a little different now, but you know, it would be like, oh wow, that's interesting. You want to date? Dating wow. is only different. <laughs> it's only different if you make it different. Well, that's the same. Then I would, I would say, if dating is, is different. Then I would say the same thing goes for uh, when you when you're breaking up with the female. Then that's basically, well, how would you get over it? That's that's uh, uh that has to do with the individual that you're involved with. Okay. So it's no really no standard answer of how you would you have to do it based on who you were with. Okay. All right. It is time for our producers' drinks of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not even fooling with her. She, uh, it's a good thing I don't drink. That's why we have the hashtag Don't Drink with Chan. Cause she, how you fucked up, Eddie? You was getting ready to leave. You had your keys in your hand. You was getting ready to leave, and she bought you a beer. You was like, I was getting ready to leave. Now I gotta drink some more. <laughs> so, yeah, you did. <laughs> I was yeah, ready to go. Yeah. All right. So I like, where, I like, where does beer come from? It came from the bar for you. All right, so. With that being said, it is time for our producer's drink of the week. This week's drink is called The Godfather. I I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Hey, 
Hey everybody, tonight's drink of the week is called The Godfather. Tonight's drink of the week, we're gonna use two ounces of scotch or bourbon and a half an ounce of amaretto. And all we're gonna do with this is in a rock glass with ice, combine the scotch or the bourbon and amaretto and stir. And there you have it, The Godfather. All right guys, be safe, enjoy, drink responsibly. I'll see you next week. Godfather. That's why I'm full of her. That is exactly why I don't fool with her, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't checked out the drink of the week, please go to Facebook.com slash Playing Devil's Advocate. Click the link, try out the drink, and let her know what you think. All right. Um, it is time for us to get back into the fun. Also, while you're on Facebook, you can ask some more questions for these guys. Uh, Mel Jackson and Eddie Drummond, um, they are being quite transparent with you guys today. So uh, we really do appreciate that. Don't forget to send us your tweets at PDA underscore Miss Kiki. That's PDA underscore MSKI. I K I K I, that's my name. Um, <laughs> and we'll get your comments on Air Sporty. Yes, I'm I here. You waiting to get to your man, honey? Let me get yeah. out today. Okay, so Mel, check this out. Do you really believe? I right, it's a two-part question. Do you believe in love at first sight, and do you believe that you can love only one person till death do you part? Uh, um, the first one. Do I believe in love at first sight? Yes. I believe that there is that there is something that happens, you know, when there uh, when when there's an energy that um uh, that that you know that's that's resonating that frequency that you know that that is that's attracted to you that that resonates with you and makes your magnetic field. So so yes. Now if you want to call that love at first sight, I don't know about all of that per se. But uh but but the second part of do I think uh. Uh, what, what's the sec say the second part again? Do you believe in loving one person till death do you part? Oh, I don't. I don't. Uh, I mean, first of all, I think that that comes with if you go go into a committed exclusive situation, then that's that's to death do you part. But I thought I thought the question was that did I thought did I think that that was just you had like one soulmate? That's what I did. I misunderstand? You can answer that question as well. <laughs> answer that too. No, no, I think I no, I would I would say I would say your soulmate just, you know, taking into consideration that uh um, you know, that no no man or woman knows the time or the hour when they're gonna transition. I would just say that your soulmate is the compilation of, of everybody that you kind of love. That's the composite of everybody. Because I don't wanna discount the the, the impact of the, the, the young lady that I had that I that I first had my first kiss with or the one that I had my first tongue kiss with or the first woman I had all sex with, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want to discount what they the impact that they've had on my life. Or the one and that, I'm you know, sure your your more. future partners after that don't want to discount what they did either. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm just saying but that's the easy part. Those are the easy ones when you say when you when you're Old enough, and you get into those relationships where you where you're conscious, mm -hmm. and you get into relationships, and you're saying, "Oh, I have some idea that this could be my soulmate." I'm just talking about that, you know. With everybody, I think it's a it's a compilation as opposed to just a one. It's a certain energy that comes together. That's my my answer. Okay. Well, now let me rephrase the question for you, Eddie. And, and I rephrase the question for you because Mel is family, you know. So I can't ask him like I'm gonna ask you these questions because you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mail, mail the peoples, but you. So, do you believe what you see here is love at first sight? That's the first part of the question. <laughs> and two, do you believe seriously in till death do you part? You know, that you, you can love only one person and that be the person that you're with. Love at first sight, definitely no. I've never been a person, a person that believed in love at first sight, like Mel. I, I feel people's auras and energy and chemistry, and mm -hmm. people have negative energy. Like it's sometimes you just walk around somebody, you like, oh, like what the, you know, what was that? You know what I'm saying? So you definitely do that. So so those ones that feel like love at first sight, all that is a little bit mostly lust and then other stuff in there mixed in there with the energies and the positive energies. But love at first sight, that's a fairy tale. Um, as far as loving for the right. rest of your life. Yeah, I'm old. I'm an old school guy. Like I said, I've been, you know, brought up by women. I still had men around, you know, and they were older guys. You know what I'm saying? Most most of my, the male in my life were older. So I'm just old school. 
um, as far as being in, once you get married, being with that woman for the rest of your life and loving her for the rest of your life. That's the number one woman in your life. But at the same time, uh, I still love relationships that I've been in. I still love individuals. It's not the same love, you know, as for your wife or something like that. But yeah, if you ask me, every time you ask me, I'm going to say, yes, I love that woman. But and you shouldn't discredit that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't discredit that. You know what, I don't I don't a negative. I'll add on. I'll add on. I, no, I was just about to say, the, and the reason that I'll add on to that is because I kind of think I have a, I have a challenge, in, and I would love for you to present that to the uh, the audience that's watching. I mean, that's watching as well as listening, and asking them, do they think that monogamy is natural? That was my Ooh. question. Like, Mel, that was my question. I can't stand you. Get out of my head. Only one, I knew one, that was one person can occupy this crazy person at, at one time. Get out of here. I'm evicting you out of my brain. Right. Well, that was, but I guess that was the only. That was the only reason why I would say, well, I don't necessarily think monogamy is natural, but I think that it's possible. Okay. I hear you. You, know, you. you understand? You want, you I think attraction has the, on a, on a, on a, on a basic level, I think uh, 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 attraction has a lot to do with the cells uh, trying to perpetuate themselves, but we romanticize it a little bit, mm -hmm. but, but give thanks for that. Because uh, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Do you, do you, Eddie, since he brought it up? He, he, he perfectly answered his own question. Basically. Okay, and what's your answer to his own question? My, my answer to it is, is it natural? No. Is it possible and do people do it? Yes. But the percentages of that not happening versus the percentages that are happening is you, you guys know it's overwhelmingly lopsided on actually, you know, not being monogamous. So you know, yeah already even though it's the right thing, that's not the common thing for us humans. Right. So I don't know. It's kinda... the right thing. Here, here's the interesting thing about about monogamy. It it brings up a lot of a lot of things about people's belief systems. Um, and you use the word, it's the right thing, the, the phrase, it's the right thing. And right to who? Exactly. Isn't that subjective to each individual relationship? Because I know that a lot of times, and that was something that someone brought up in the questions that we were going to talk about, is that women and people nowadays tend to romanticize relationships. They romanticize uh, a love. You know, because we're conditioned by the movies that we see. We're conditioned by, you know, those uh, exception to the rule stories that we hear about, you know, other people's relationships and things like that. And so monogamy is something that we're taught. We're told you go be with this person for the rest of your life. That's not something that is natural that you come out knowing automatically, like you come out automatically knowing how to breathe, right? So it's not something that's part of your natural system. So, um, I, I, in terms of relationships, people try to um, make everything one size fit all when it's not. Relationships and love and those types of loving relationships are custom fit to those people. It should be anyway to work for those people. I'm sorry, I got on my. And I think, and I think by, I think by, I think by definition, and I, 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 in second definition that uh, you see that the monogamy is. It's a state of being, but it's also a practice. Yes. And if you got to practice it, that's not natural. Yeah. Go ahead, Eddie. You wanted to say something else about that? Yeah, I, I was about to say, as far as me personally, I'm going to be one of those people trying to be monogamous in my, you know, relationship and then, you know, with my wife and all that type of stuff. I'm going to do that because that's all I know. I'm brainwashed to think like that since day one basically. So that's my decision. That's what I'm already going to try to do. Am I going to be successful at it? Hopefully. You know, we'll pray about it, get through it, do counseling, well, whatever we got to do. Well, 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 well this, is, and this, is, this is what I'll say with it. I've been in two long-term committed situations for um, um, both seven, one seven years, one eight years. And, you know, honestly, did I have to get into relationships at the time that I got in them and commit? No. But it was something that when I, when I met them at that particular time, that wanted to do that, and I didn't have to. Uh, it was it was it was a, it was a wanting to be together. 
there was no wanting to separate. There was, you know, and I think sometimes people, they get, they don't realize that there's a process in coming together as one and sharing life with each other. And then they, when you start dealing with the process of coming together, a lot of people look at that after the honeymoon period is over with and they start looking at those as problems. But if people treated each other exactly like they treated each other when they started trying to come together every day, if you didn't try to get credit for yesterday and the next day you did exactly what you did the first day you were trying to war, or you, you did the same thing to show him that you were thinking about him, if people continued that, then I think that relationship would uh, would last longer. But I think like with everything else, like with the pillow on your bed, sometimes when it's there, you start to take it for granted a little bit. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely. Um, do you guys believe in unconditional love? Do you believe that love is unconditional? That's a question that came in for you guys. Do I believe that love is unconditional? Yes. I, I mean, I mean, I guess this, because I think the people's definition of love would be, it's uh, everybody has the definition of what they think love for and I, what love is, and I think that those there are conditions that come with that. Yep, it's part of it's part of the definition in most eyes. Okay. I got some chat room questions, Kiki. Go for it. Um, the first one, can you love a woman who plays video games, <laughs> watch Sports Center, and loves anime and action movies? Oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> I, look, it's well, a question. I you, can, exactly you can fall in love with question. anybody. I have so, to look at the screen to know who in chat room wrote that. Right. But that's her question. Mel, could you? What, 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 is, what is that question? Can you, you love a woman who plays video games, watch Sports Center, and loves anime and action movies? Can I love her? Yes. Did you say can I love her? Yeah, I can love her all night long. <laughs> <laughs> if it's necessary, I, I you know I give it my best shot. Yeah, I mean you know if all if all the other elements line up, yeah, absolutely. Those other things we talked about, and those are some elements that she has that she brings. To the table, it's like, yeah, let's do it. Okay. I tell her, dress up, dress up like my, dress up like <laughs> her favorite anime character. Let's get it. All right for the cosplay. Come on with it now. Right. For role play. Mm -hmm. It's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. You didn't, you didn't say any, I mean, you, you was that. I thought you was about to say some negative stuff in there. It wasn't like really negative stuff. It was just her character. That's yeah. it. Uh, what in terms of and that kind of takes us into it because that's kind of like the opposite sort of but um, in terms of men's view on women and femininity what? femininity what do you find um, attractive about femininity in a woman you know a woman who I mean, she's oh, not prissy oh, to the point where, oh, I can't do that, that. not like that. But, Everything. What are you talking about? Well, I, I, hey, I, this is yeah. not for me. It's not Everything is sexy, sexy about women. Okay. Andy said it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, they put down the law. That's it. Femininity. Yeah, man, it's just so many, it's so many things about oh. women. I think you guys are absolutely amazing. Oh, my God. The one of the greatest creations. I mean, vexed me, but okay. I'm telling you, I've never been vexed more by anything in this existence. But, uh, but women, for, uh, you know, uh, other than women, but man, women are incredible. Everything about, and I, I think that was said. I think, I think that was set up. You think it was set up? And, and femininity by the most, by the most high. That, that's by true. the most high. God. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's just so, something that we praise. There's nothing that we can do. Hang on, Mel. Hang on, Mel. Go ahead, Eddie. No, go, 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 Mel. Go. No, no, man. I was not, no, that's it. I was just saying, by God, instead of by God, go ahead. Oh, I mean, I mean, it's just, it's just worldly, just loved. I mean, it femininity is a thing that where men will praise it and women will praise it. I mean, when you got something that powerful as other women, you know, realizing the beauty of women and everything like that. Just as much as men do. I mean, it's it's just something that that's just beyond us. So, okay. and we're always going to love everything about women. All right. Um, 
So you, so is he said, so he said that he can understand how a woman can love another woman. Not love another woman, you know, like uh, understand her beauty, basically. I don't, I don't understand oh, all that, yeah. all that same, you know, girl, girl, love and love stuff. I, I ain't with all that. <laughs> I, I ain't with all that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry. I, I guess by me answering the question, by me asking that question and, not, and hearing it wrong, I guess it shows that you know I'm dealing with that God is dealing with you. That was your that was your internal dialogue speaking, Mel. That's what that was. That was your yeah, internal yeah. dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, pray, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm not gonna pray for you. I want you to be you, authentically you, at all times. I'm not gonna pray for you. Sure. Um, here's the next question. Um, <laughs> is it true that what they say about men that men uh, love hard and not often? And there's no sexual innuendo in that male. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, now why well, I got to be the kid in class that's getting, you know, scolded by the teacher. Uh, but the, so, so the, yeah, I do. I think they love. I, I don't know. I, I think it is what it is as far as when you consider love. You know, so when you, when you, when people, I don't believe in falling into something. I think that, you know, it starts off with a friendship, and it's something that, you know, you, it's an X factor that you don't even know. You don't know when it's gonna come. You may have an idea. So, you know. But what I, I do think with a man, when you really do find that that uh, uh, that one that fits like that, that you, I, I don't I don't think that you think about breaking up. I think that once you make that commitment, it, it, it's just like what, what Eddie was saying when he was saying that uh, it, it's forever when when you start thinking about that, you start thinking about the future. I think really that's the only thing that separates a, a good male friend from the one that you're in a uh, committed exclusive relationship with is the intimacy in that way. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a, a, a sex thing as far as men and women. Um, I, I think it's just the individual thing if somebody loves hard, if somebody doesn't. Um, I've loved hard before, and I've been just so-so before. You know, it, it's just all a part of me growing as a person and, um, you know, having different experiences and everything like that, that that molded me to where I am right now as far as, my level of falling and my comfort level. So every everybody's just individual um, when it comes to that. You got to respond. Yeah, to I, that. I could say I love hard. I could say I love hard at one time, but then you know when I look back in hindsight, was you know it was. It, I also deal with like did I not want to lose? Did I not want to make the mistake? And I and maybe that's something that people go through with actual marriage where they don't want to get divorced or whatever, but. I went through that whole thing of like, you know, like not wanting to, to admit that you picked wrong, you know, so that made that it just, and you may want it to work for that. So they can be all, like you said, I think they can be all other, they can be different kinds of factors that could, that could, you know, say if a person is loving hard, they can be interpreted as hard. Well, let's yeah. keep and, I, and I want everybody to know my responses is off of, you know, I don't have any kids and I've never been married. So I've never been on a level as some other people as far as, you know, relationship wise and that level of love, you know, I, I don't know if stuff changes as far as my emotions and everything. Once I get married to have kids and things of that nature. Uh, so just these are the single guys answers right here. It's to him too. That's it. It's, just backing myself okay. up. Okay. Now too. So y'all, y'all in the same Yeah, I don't, room. I don't, I mean, no, I don't, yeah, I don't have anybody. Yeah, I don't male have, has kids I don't before though and stuff, so. No, he doesn't. Oh. No. Oh. We yeah. oh we had we yeah. we both we in the same boat. Two unicorns, ladies. I thought Mel had a kid. Two unicorns. <laughs> two unicorns. Yeah. No kids. Yeah. You got, oh, some, okay. um, you got some responses to that question in the chat room from some of the guys. One says, two of us. I love hard, and the reason it's not often is because men get hurt also." And then um, another one says, "Yes, we do get hurt. Unfortunately, unlike women." We don't have the option to cope, meaning cry or bust windows out of cars, et cetera. Please don't bust nobody's windows out that car. No, because that would be so wrong. <laughs> That's a whole nother uh, show all together. Um, Sporty, I know you had a question that you, yeah, wanted, yeah. To, you wanted to ask. Yes. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. What, if anything, scares you about love, Mel? 
um, what is anything that scares me about love? Uh, I don't think that love is nothing scares me about love. Love is what makes me move forward. It is the it is the, the fuel, it's the energy that pushes me forward. Um, well, yeah, this, when I when I think about love, I don't think fear. <laughs> All right. Let me rephrase my question for you, Eddie. <laughs> what and is I never answered it. Now you want me to. <laughs> no, no, you don't, which is making this so Go much ahead. fun. So, so much fun. What, if anything, scares you about loving me? Because <laughs> your ass is crazy. That right there is scary enough. I know, right? No, what scares you about love, if anything, Eddie? Yeah, nothing, nothing scares me about love. It's just being single. I really don't like dating and learning somebody else. And I've, and it's a lot of people out there that feel the same way like me. You got to go through this whole process again and learning somebody, and then you don't know if this one's going to work out. So it doesn't scare me, but at the same time, I feel like that would be the, the part in relationships or not relationships, non-relationships is when you're single and have to date to get to that point again, or to get to that point for the first time. But love, no, nah, no, nah, you, you shouldn't be scared of it because the world wouldn't be nothing without love. Uh, and let me and let me just kind of like add a, a something to that question. In terms of since both of you guys said no, um, there's no fear there. Are you ever afraid that you might pick wrong, or pick? I should say not wrong. <laughs> pick bad you know what I mean because there are a lot of times we pick the same what, person with different do you mean places. do you mean like 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 as in like all right is this girl just like fronting all this time you know really a representative of this person are you talking about like something like that that I mean, or that you, the reason the reasons why you picked that person. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, it could be that it could be that you didn't see all the signs that she was something different than what she was trying to show you or it could be that you know a couple of things. It could be a very a myriad of reasons. Is that ever anything that's cause for pause? I should say, as opposed to fear. Um. No. I mean, we, see, we, we, there's a difference when we're talking about love and we're talking about being in a, a, a relationship. I, I think sometimes you can love a person, but you guys can't be together. You guys, your lives just don't go together. But that doesn't mean you don't love them. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand? So it's the difference between actually trying to build a life with someone, and that's the challenge. That the love is what the real love is. What kind of what gets you through it? It's the other stuff that makes you kind of give up when you when you realize that it's not just uh you know it's just it's not just a romantic comedy where you know it's what happens after the, the end credits. That it's a little more to it. A lot of people go into it with unrealistic expectations about what it means, and we talk about real intimacy. Not just intimacy in bed, you know, by you having sex with somebody. It's like if you know she, you know, she's having a challenge with with a vagina, and then you go to the OBGYN with her, and you're looking in there with the doctor trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. That's really interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He always got to take it to the full out extent, right? You, you, you always got to go way left. Uh, you see me? Hey, I be listening. Because, because, no, because, nobody, because nobody thinks about that. Everybody thinks it's all fun and games. And right. You have to, you know. It is. It is. But you know like, what? Intimacy is important. Life. Intimacy is important because, yes. you know, what? I, th I think we, we did a show before, and I, I think I'm going to do, do a different version of it. Um, when we talked about how love is not something that just happens it's chemical some of it you can control meaning in terms of where you place yourself and what you put yourself in the line to see but in terms of that interaction with said person is chemical you got vesopressin you got oxytocin you have all these other things that are happening in your body that you necessarily cannot turn on and off like a switch so um, in terms of being able to, when you start to start to, uh, let's see, excrete oxytocin, that's the bonding chemical. So when you're spending time with that person, that's when that intimacy starts. 
it's you know it's start, it's happening in in those moments. Yeah. So it's not about just the physical. It's about some other things that are happening chemically with you. So anyway, um, what is the most romantic get thing? Get you thanks for all those chemical things. Shut your face. Get thanks. Uh, <laughs> what, is, what is the most romantic thing you've ever done for a woman, Mel? Wow, what is the most romantic? That you know, I don't, I don't necessarily consider myself the most romantic person. If it, if I do, if it is, it's just like as a result of me, like I said, listening to her and then thinking of something in the moment. But if I was, to, if I was to say, what was the most romantic thing uh, that I did? Uh, I don't know, Eddie, 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 you, 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 you got it on top of me. <laughs> you going to pass it off to me? <laughs> yeah, because I'm thinking. Because I'm, I have to think about what okay, okay. I think. You have me. to think a little bit. All right, all right. I got you. I got you. Let, let me hold all on. Right. Before, before you go, Eddie. Yeah, I'm not. Wait, before you go. I'm not, me, wait, before you go. Ladies and gentlemen, don't fault Mel. Mel isn't one of those people. And, and, and we'll talk about this in just a second, though, Mel. Mel doesn't. He, he says to me. Uh, in separate conversations, Mel is one of my very, 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 very good friends. Probably knows me better than a lot of people. Um, and he said, you know, I'm just not that thoughtful. <laughs> so maybe, right. and, he, and, and it's not a bad thing in the way that he meant it, but he's like, I'm, I'm just don't, I don't think like that, you know, so. But, but, see, but, but yeah, but it's not, but I'm saying that in the thoughtfulness, it's, it's, I go with that moment, but I can't say. Like, you know, a friend of mine, he just did a thing where, you know, he had a, the, 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 I think the, the 13th anniversary where he had, he still had the piece of paper that she wrote a number on when he first met at the club, you know, mm -hmm. doing dances and house music. That's I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't, I, yeah, you get it? So, you know, but I, but I would say that if anything is, uh, 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 I think, uh, I bought, I bought, um, a, a, a musical instrument. I would say that I bought a cl a clarinet, you know, for you know. I think that that was pretty romantic. That I thought she told me about what her relationship was to the clarinet and what it meant to her family and and how she felt and all those things. And I just supplied prime the brand new clarinet. Okay, you had me nervous there for a minute because I was like, "What about woodwinds?" Is romantic, but I understand. That. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, but that was that. But I'm but I'm just saying that if I if I but I'm saying that that's what. I would think that you know that that's romantic. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It would have to be the woman that would do that. Okay, Eddie, you sound since you've been around women a lot. It sounds to me like you might have a, a better handle on the whole uh, fantasy island type shit that women be thinking about. Go for it. What's the most romantic thing? Well, well there's there's not like a pinpoint like moment i mean if you're a romantic person you always romantic you always doing romantic stuff people if you're not then you you just not and it's just depending on the relationship i mean what i would think as far as the a woman i was dating that would be the most romantic thing that i've done is played a football game got injured in that game but still found the time to decorate the house for valentine's day that night and type deal had everything going whoop 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 but it's like, all right, you just played an NFL game and got injured and all the stuff in the hospital, but you still find time to, you know, do something like that for a half an hour and have everything set up and, you know, cook the meal and all that type of stuff. So that's not like a romantic thing. You know, we've done that often. But just the fact that, you know, I gave it the time and enough, you know, emotion and care and love in it, that made it, you know, the moment that it was. You know, so stuff like that. It, you know, it could be oh, like little it. stuff, but. Do you think? And I'm gonna go to use next. I, I got one. I got one. I got uh oh, one. I got one. He got, I got one. one. He got one. Got one. Go ahead. <laughs> go for it, Bill. Uh, yeah, got it. Okay. Here, he here, inspired here, here. you. Um, right. I was inspired. It's uh, and that's what it is. It's a, it's an inspiration that I'm an I'm a, I'm an artist, right? Because I I draw, I do things, blah blah blah. But I usually um. At first, I used to didn't draw anything or write anything unless I had a pencil. So I was on a plane one time, and I was, you know, um, uh, I was uh, inspired by a, a woman that, you know, that I ended up being my, you know, my queen. Uh, it was the first time that I wrote a, a poem, a poem, and completely all the way through without any mistakes, and I did it in pen. It was the first time ever, and I, I shared it with her, and then I recorded it as a, as a song. 
Is there a romantic? All right. And, and let me ask this piggyback off of that, and uh, then I'll go to Sporty. Do you believe, in terms of inspiration, do you believe that in terms of love and romance, that a, each person can bring something different out of you in terms of how you express uh, romance? Uh, absolutely. I, 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 Eddie, you want me on that one? Absolutely. I think that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Because they inspire something even in you. And that's the difference between each each one that you you know you spend more, the most time with. Okay. Four. Uh, did you want to hear that, Eddie? I agree, and 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 with me in my relationships, I've I haven't been consistently with like the same type of woman, and you know that type of deal. So my my relationships have been drastically different when it comes to you know um, the woman. So I, I've I've been through different you know types of relationships and things going on and that type of deal, and it and it definitely affects you differently and, and, and grooms you and and brings things out of you and. and yeah, man, it, it just depends on who you're with. But yeah, they that they definitely can bring it out of you. Oh my god. Hey, oh my god, can they bring it out of you? Oh man. <laughs> you're a nasty lech. That's what you are. <laughs> here we go again. Eddie, oh, I'm man. sorry. I know you the first time on here. You're a rookie, you know, um you know, I I said to someone last week. We we uh kind of Don't worry. We, Don't worry, he's not corrupting me. We I, deflowered me, you. I'm no, already... I just want to let you know, somehow, some way, it does not matter what we're talking about on this show. Somewhere around this time of night, it always circles around to sex. I don't know how. I don't know why. We could be talking about religion. We could be talking about politics. It's hey. always the same time. Go ahead. Did we say sex? Get... Go ahead. So, uh, uh I heard Chan. I heard Chan too. I thought we said something about squirting. Nobody said nothing about squirting. That's your ass. That's talking you talking about. You always, why you always gotta bring that up? Oh, my bad. You okay, I'll go back. Hashtag I think, meet you. Uh, I think, Hashtag I meet think we should talk about. It. I think it's a problem. No, we don't, don't need to talk about that. Sporty has a question for you. Oh, I was just saying, I don't and she's been waiting you know, patiently to ask. Me. Go ahead, Sporty. Women should so uncomfortable. Women should. I know that there's some Hold women on, that feel now. uncomfortable. Hold on. <laughs> Zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket. Go ahead, Sporty. Okay, so I just got a couple of inbox messages which are now going to require Sporty poems, one for each of them. Number one, Mel, this poem is for you. I was just asked, you know, Sporty, I know you in Chicago and Mel... He may or may not be. Is he broadcasting from your house with you? Is that why he's not on camera today? <laughs> so here's my poem for you ladies. Uh, and this is specifically for male. Roses are red and violets are blue. I am not your segue to get to male. Go do you. Okay? <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Male, they like. I'm they look, they looking for you. Huh? They think he's here. Okay, Mel, hang on a second. Finish, Sporty, with your okay, second so comment. Eddie, here's the poem for you. This uh, is completely from me, child. Oh, Lord. Roses are red and violets are blue. As soon as I touch down in Atlanta, I'm coming to see you. <laughs> wow, wow. Sporty, am I going to have to cut your camera? I think you're going to have to cut her camera. I'm going to have to cut your camera. camera. Like, you cannot be <laughs> harassing our guests. As a matter of fact, I do it right now. Cut. Thanks. Yeah. No longer in the broadcast. <laughs> okay, so let me let me go to some of the questions that were happening in the chat room. Um, a gentleman, Wes, when our repeat offender said, um, "Are actions romantic if they're not appreciated?" And I said that your their reaction has nothing to do with your gesture, your action. He said, "So if I send a dozen roses and she tosses them in the trash, it's still romantic." Absolutely. Your action has nothing to do with her being an ungrateful helper. No. Right. <laughs> really, let's just be real about it. It has nothing to do with that. So don't send her ass nothing else ever again. Send her a pink slip telling her, bitch, it's over. I quit you. Send her a note saying, I quit you. <laughs> good old school note. Keep yes, I like it. I like it. Tell her you quit her. All right. Um, 
Let me let me go to in here and get some more of these questions that came in. I apologize, guys. Um, was there anything before I just jump out there? Was there anything that you guys wanted to talk about in terms of love and romance that we have not yet or anybody has not yet touched upon? Uh, I gotta think. You thinking? Well, while they're thinking, I have a question for him, Kiki. Go for it. Yeah. So, Kiki asked you guys earlier, <laughs> what is the most romantic thing that you've done for a woman? And just to counter that question, what's the most romantic thing a woman has done for you? And you liked it. Oh, wow. Wow. I know what mine is. Well, what's yours, bro? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, my girl helped me get a check, and then we got it in all night. That was the perfect, the most romantic ever. She what? <laughs> she helped you get some money? She did what? She helped me get a check. She <laughs> helped me get a check, and we did it all night, all morning. Wow. A couple days. Wow. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's as romantic as it gets. Wow. Okay. Oh. He's a simple man. He doesn't require a lot. Uh, get him some money. Give him some ass. <laughs> you did it. It, it. it should go both ways. That should be the sexiest wow. thing for a woman. <laughs> what for him to give us some money and some? For for him to help her get a check. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I ain't yeah. paying for it. I hope they heard that distinction. You pay for it, baby. You pay for it one way or the other. Right. Well, I hope they hey, heard we all know, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Mel. Um, all right, man. See, you know, uh, in, uh, rather than just say one thing, I'll say out of respect for all of the things, because it's at the most, we'd be here all night if I had to calculate something like that. I'm a Libra. So I would say, uh, that the most romantic thing is to 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 to, uh, to go with whatever uh, you know crazy thing that I, I may want to do that I may want to do that I may want to try in any given scenario. So you know that that's across the board. Was that really an like, answer? Yeah, uh, yeah it is it, yeah, because the I don't want, because there's so many different. I don't want to disrespect, but I'll just say the most romantic thing for me. For me, if you want to, if you want to talk about romance, you know, uh, that that if I had to say what 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 I enjoy, what brings me joy within it, is that her being open to, you know, experience the moment for whatever that is and, and follow wherever that may lead. And that, so that, being submissive, basically, right? In a form. Uh, if that leads to a check, and if that, oh no, if that leads to a check as well as sex for a couple of days, I'm with. You. Yeah, yeah. Right now. <laughs> hey, I like I like when girls be submissive too. So I'm I'm on the same page right there. Oh, <laughs> that, that's all Mel was saying. Because Mel basically Mel we, basically said that we, what he described was a girl being submissive, and I said we on the same page. You just girls shared being something with us that we did not know oh, about you, Eddie. So thank you. <laughs> what if if we say something and you be like, yeah, cool? We be like, hell yeah! <laughs> Make sure you go to Kiki's event on Saturday. He, yeah, I will you, be there. You gonna come? I mean, you will be there. Let yeah, me change that phrase. Let me change that phrase. Huh? It might, it might, uh, it might be for a little bit of time to squeeze in there because I got a lot to do, but. Yeah, I, I definitely will swing past. Yeah, I'm just letting you know, you come there, you're going to not want to leave. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I got you know. to. I got to go make money. Okay, well, all right. Well, we'll stop by afterwards. But anyway, that's a whole nother uh, All right. That's a whole nother yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. A, that's a whole nother thing. Here and there. Um, so next question that came in. Um, I, oh, my God. I'm I'm hearing my producer and she's a weirdo, so y'all have to forgive me if I seem a little distracted because she's a little weirdo, um, and she talks, she says crazy things. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> why do men who are unavailable? This has nothing to do with the topic, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Why a men do men who are unavailable for some reason or another, married, married to work, geographically undesirable, approach women in a way that would lead a woman to think there was more to come? 
why men that are unavailable? Why do they leave women on? Basically. Oh. I mean, you know, sometimes a man is just, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, Patrice O'Neill said it, said it best. Sometimes he just wants to see, you know, if he still got it. And I don't, not that I'm condoning. Okay. Because, I mean, what would be the other reason? Sex? Or you just want to see yeah. it, you know. What? Go ahead. Well, that, that's, always, that's obvious. <laughs> Sex part is obvious, but, you know. We, we say it is, is the number one answer. They <laughs> okay. just wanted to see if they got it. That's like me. That's like me. I retired from football for two years and went back in 2010 just to see if I had it. I still had it, but, you know, at the same time, that, it's kind of like the same thing. You know, they just want that rush. They just want that rush. They shouldn't be doing it anyway because they're in a committed relationship, but at the same time, that goes back to is it natural or not? Okay. Sporty, you got a question? Well, what does it take to what does it take to make you decide if you're going to be monogamous or not? Good question. A lot. Such what, as uh, to, to make you decide. Yes. Well, I, I I don't know. It's whatever that uh that thing that uh that that clicks inside of you that you know that you uh that uh that you don't want to seek other options. And I don't I don't know how to explain it. I, I can't I can't I enjoy love. I'm a big fan of it. You know I'm pro love. You know, but I don't I don't really understand it. I think you know. How how it all how it all works out that you know somebody uh, decides that that's the individual you know that you know it, in, in in both of my situations where it ended up being long term situations I didn't go in uh, necessarily when we started dating thinking like oh this is something that I'll be in for the next seven to eight years that, that's not how it dealt with me. And I think what her question though Mel is is that it, it, let's just use it in retrospect then. When was it? What was it that happened that you knew that that was the transition? That this is the transition point where we're no longer just messing around or I, no longer just I think, dating? I think what Mel is saying is, is the same thing with me. Like, it takes a lot for me to get comfortable and everything and love somebody to where we're in a committed relationship. But with me, it's just a feeling that you feel. You just wake up like that. You just wake up and it's on your mind and you're like, hey, you know. I want to start this committed relationship up with this woman. And then you sit down with her. Y'all have the conversation. Then y'all start it off. If she's feeling the same way. But it's, it's honestly just like you just wake up. You just wake up one day like that. You honestly do. Hey, you, you, I got an idea. I got it. Here's an, I may not be able to articulate what it is, but I'll give you an, an example. You know that it might, when you know that it might be something, is when she is the... The last person you want to talk to before you go to sleep, and she is the first person that you want to talk to when you wake up, and she's the first person that you want to share when something good happens to you. That that's the first person you think about sharing that information with. That's that's kind of like when you know that it might be something. Okay. I like. That. All right. Bye. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, because I, I don't know other way. To, I don't know any one other way to say it. Oh and, no, that was crystal clear. That and no other men, no other men commented on it. What happened to Eddie? Who told him he could go away? <laughs> Leave that man alone, girl. What? What? I, I don't hey, know. Hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, don't I don't memorize know. what he looked like so he could disappear for a second if he want to. Oh my <laughs> Lord, Jesus! We got, we got it. Anyway, um, so Mel, you gotta answer the question, huh? You say Eddie, Eddie answered too. Yeah, he answered. He said it took a lot, and, and that he you you yeah. finished up by saying if she, she's the last person that you want to speak to before you go there to sleep, go. and the first person that you wake you want to talk to when you wake up, and you that she's the first person that you want to speak to when something good happens or bad happens. Yeah, that's just a given the given idea. That's awesome. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, what advice would you give to a woman who's in a romantic relationship with a man who wasn't much of a talker? 
right? And considering that communication is, is a huge key to a successful relationship, what would you advise her to do? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, communication does, is not, I think utterance is probably the most primitive form of communication. And it's the quickest way to have a misunderstanding is to try to communicate using utterance. So I think that there is a way that you can communicate, you know, to your significant other, you know, in ways that you, what you understand, where it's not always talking. Now, if she's saying that I just want you to, to, to talk to me, to get him to talk, then, you know, <laughs> if the person is not a talker, he's a listener. You get it? It's like you have to find the balance in the relationship. Okay. I'll pass it off to Eddie on it. He passed it on to you. Yeah, and then and so some women they kind of tiptoe and sugarcoat stuff. Nah, if you got somebody like that, you got to be direct and let them know. Like when you say it, they should know how you're feeling by just the way that you're saying it and explaining yourself. But be blunt, because if you sugarcoat it and you know run around and tiptoe, they're never ever going to get what you're trying to get to them. So be blunt, be direct. And um, yeah, I mean, just you make it happen, especially if you love that guy, you know, make it happen as far as a woman go. Here's a good question that came in. Um, <clears throat> have you ever, this is both sides, have you, have, has a woman ever told you she loves you, but you didn't love her back? What did you do? And vice versa. Have you ever told a woman you loved her and she didn't say it back and, and what happened? Belle. And, and that big question is, has a woman ever told me that she loved me? Yeah. And, well, I, well, I, I mean, I, I, get, I get that a lot when people when they tell me that they love me. But, <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm always, first of all, and I'm, and I'm saying that when that happens, I'm always taking it back again. You know, I first give thanks and praise for, you know, for being somebody that can, you know, be of service and that we know. But I'm, I'm, I'm serious that, you know, I get that a lot just based on what I do. You, you know what I mean? Well, they say I, I love you, but fan. I know. I don't mean a fan coming up to you. Somebody, oh, no, I love you. I think you're the great. You're the, you know, I don't mean that one. I mean somebody that you have had some type of intimacy, you know, intimacy with. You've been spending time with this person. And she says to you, you know, I love you. And you like, you don't feel that way. So do you say, and when you, you know, or. You no, uh, but what. I'm saying to you that it's decent. The words with me, I've been desensitized with the words. So I'm saying it's about it's more what 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 affects me more is, is the the action. But when somebody says that they love me, it's like you know, love it means that can mean different things. And sometimes people use that for different things. And there's there's a trigger for them. Well, it's, it's a lot of stuff that's, that revolves around that. Okay. But uh, but have I ever told a woman that I loved her? Yeah, she didn't reciprocate. It's, it's a, have I ever told a woman that I loved her and that she didn't reciprocate? Yeah, that's why I'm single. Oh, <laughs> oh, Mel, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang! At least you can laugh about it. <laughs> oh. oh, what? What about you, Eddie? I hope you have a happy ending. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I hope your ending was happier than mine. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I've never. Uh, it was the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was laughing at the question. Anyway, yeah, I've never, uh, you know, been in love with a woman or said I loved a woman and she didn't reciprocate it. And it, and, and my life has always been the other way around. It's always been situations where the woman, you know, gets emotionally involved, you know, first and everything like that. Um, it's it's common when you're an entertainer or a celebrity or whatever. Um, it's quite common for that, and and then it's just it's just nobody's. Well, I mean there are instances, but um, it rarely lines up the same time emotionally between men and women. It, it just, it's just like that. So when that moment comes, it's a little awkward, but. If you're a grown man, you know how to handle those situations to where it's less awkward and you guys can keep flowing like normal. You know what I'm saying? How do you do? And um, and then the girl, could, then they, then the woman can make more decisions down the road. But now she she said that really. Sometimes women say that just to see what page y'all on, and that's the only way 
for her to find out is just like, blam, hey, I love you. All right, now what you about to say? Like, what we. Yeah, but what do you say to her if that's not how you feel? What do you say? Because we have a lot of, you know, you said if you're a grown man, no. there are a lot of people who wouldn't know what to do in that situation. What would no. you tell them to say? Same, same situation. You can't sugarcoat anything. You have to be blunt because women will think, well, in relationships, some women will think something else of what you said. They'll be like, oh, he said this, but he, you know, probably meant this over in here. So you have to be direct. You know, don't be harsh to them, anything like that. Just really sit down and explain and communicate and talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Talk to them, let them know what's going on and let them understand that, you know, you know, you, I really like you right now. I, I know you emotionally, you said you're in love and everything. I'm, I'm just not at that state right now, but I think we should still, you know, keep working on us, you know, continue to keep learning each other. I mean, just something on the, on the lines of that. And you should already be prepared for that because you can already, men can already sense when girls is, is feeling a lot. Right? Like, oh, man, she's all in her feelings. Is that right? Yeah, we can sense it. So be prepared. It's like, come on, be prepared. If yeah, you're not on the same that. Y'all can sense that? Y'all have a sixth sense on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just know this stuff. It ain't even a sixth sense. Y'all tell us. Just how don't I know y'all telling us. How do I feel, Eddie? Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a legitimate if a question. If a woman tells you that she loves you, if a woman says that she loves me, the first thing, you know, on that, because you got to think about that. If she's telling you that, you know, I love you and it's coming out of nowhere, that's, that's kind of, you know, I mean, I'm just talking about when you, like what you were saying, Kiki, when you were saying you were, it's clear that you're inside of a relationship, you, you, you've been dating, and she said as a result of this dating that I, you know, that I'm coming to the realization that I love you, meaning that, you know, because what does that mean to her? What does it mean she says that? Does that mean that I want, you know, I want to have your baby, that I realize that I want to give you children? I want you to be the father of my children, or I want you to, you, you, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? But I would, that's what I would try to, first of all, I would say thank you, and then I would try to explore what that means, but especially if it caught me off guard. Okay. Forty had a question. Yes, question. Um, both of you uh, travel with your jobs and your work. What would you tell someone to do in order to keep romance in a long-distance relationship? Mel, you're always first. Yeah, you're first. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. what, what, what would I tell them to keep the, the, the spark in it when you're traveling? Yes. Uh, I, don't, I would tell. I would tell. I would tell if it's the if it's the way where it's the guy traveling more, you know, than she is. I, I would tell her like you know the woman to just be pre be prepared when he comes when he comes back, you know, to you know to to accept the man like you know. Uh, to get to recharge to recharge him with everything, with love and energy and all those things, and then with the, with the other side of it, I'll say you know, your your, your, uh, your 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 sex conversation as far as like television. I mean, uh, television. Wow, uh, just, <laughs> like that's like a camera involved. That was the Freudian clip. I'm so sorry for that. I was thinking about the camera, the camera, uh, and uh, the camera use of use of cameras. Get cre cre creative with your cameras. You That's talk about naked saying. Skype and FaceTime. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm saying whatever she's you supposed to to like, she's supposed to like. She's supposed to call you up on the FaceTime and flip you out a boob, you know? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you want to like, look, let me look at it. Snapchat, you know, Snapchat that, so, you know. I, that's, that's something that I heard. supposed to send you a yeah, naughty little you. picture, set the camera up in the shower while she's taking a shower and send it to you, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm he, not, went to his happy place. he went to his happy place. He was like, yeah. He's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah. What about you, Eddie? What would you say? Uh, repeat it. Repeat it. We'll work work the question you, for me. The question is, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, let me rephrase it for yeah, you. Yeah, work the question. Work the question. <laughs> okay, okay. You're starting to like this. So, in order to keep the spark in our long-distance relationship, me being here in Chicago and you in Atlanta, what would yeah, you okay. advise to keep the spark going? Stop getting mad when I'm having fun when I'm gone. <laughs> Sit back. We can only see your mouth. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I 
I don't want to call you up on the phone laughing with the homies. <laughs> and you getting mad on the phone because I'm happy because I'm having fun and I'm gone. <laughs> Sit back some, Eddie. Stop you can't it. See your whole face, baby. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I take it no, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I mean, you you just got to keep it spicy, you know. You just got to keep it spicy. I mean, it's just in the instance of in a long term relationship, you got to think of more stuff to do. That's why you just can't be in love in a relationship. You got to work at it. You know, it's, it's, it's basically almost like a job. You know what I'm saying? So the people that get along and stay together, they can deal with the most stuff. You know what I'm saying? They they can deal with the other person's, you know negative what they see is negative in them or faults or whatever you know they they know they faults and they accept them and they can deal with them so you, you always got to change stuff up and be spicy and just feel your man out if he if he like pictures or whatever do it for him you know if he likes you know to be the red carpet rolled out when he comes back do it for him you know real men when when they get you know perks and everything like that you know they reward the woman too they show their appreciation you know and woman to my knowledge woman likes Loves when a guy shows his appreciation for them and stuff that they do for him. So that's uh, my little bit. All right. It, um, <clears throat> in case you don't know, Eddie and Mel, it's been a long time since you've been here. This is the time of the show where we have our Ask PDA Letter segment. And this is when um, a, a listener of the show will write us a letter and ask for our opinion on their situation. Okay. So you get to kind of do what do they do? Huh? What do they do? They write in a letter asking for advice. Oh, okay. Okay, so you get a chance. You guys get the opportunity to do what I do on a regular basis. You guys get to be a coach of some sort, a life coach of some sort, um, and help this person through their scenario. This one's kind of deep, y'all. So I'm gonna need y'all to put y'all thinking caps on because they ask specifically. Uh. For the guy to give their opinion on this, okay? I'm gonna have to give Mel this one. Uh uh, you gonna get you getting in on this one. Sit back, you been, right. you been, I'm about to <laughs> let me play the disclaimer. Yeah, I tried to do that. Right, let me play the disclaimer because we ain't trying to get sued because y'all giving bad advice. <laughs> To that today's Ask PDA letter is being brought to you by our producers, Drink of the Week. If you have not had an opportunity to check out The Godfather, now is the time to do so. Mel, I'm going to go ahead and mute you for a second because you're giving me some feedback. Um, now is your chance to go and try it out. Go to Facebook.com slash Playing Devil's Advocate. Try out the drink and let Cousin Chan know what you think. And here's our letter for today. <clears throat> Dear PDA, a month ago I got married and I was a virgin. Thing is, I've dreamed about my wedding night since I was a young girl, and it, and it was supposed to be the most romantic and amazing night of my life with the person I cannot live without. Instead, it was the most humiliating experience I have ever had. I dressed in beautiful lingerie, and my new husband didn't even take a second look at me. I was so embarrassed. I rolled over and pretended to fall asleep. That was my big night, the one night I'll never get again. What I don't understand is this is the same man who bragged about the sexual encounters he had with his ex-wife, cyber sex, and his 13-hour sex-a-thon. But when I try to touch him, he seems repulsed and pulls away. My heart can't take the never-ending rejection and the nights of crime because I don't know what I've done wrong. The sad thing is I'm pretty sure he hasn't even noticed. Even an intimate kiss would be enough for me right now. I dreamed of a man who would love me so much that he would stare at me from across the room and couldn't wait to get his hands on me, even if it was just for a second. Let me get that right. Um, 
<clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm not married to that guy. Kiki, will you please ask your guest what they suggest I should do to get things on track? Signed, technically still a virgin. Mel? Uh, what, what did I think she's in a situation where she's married and she's still a virgin and she didn't even have sex on a, a wedding night? Nope. See, that, I, I think that that's this, uh, the, the, the fundamental challenge in that situation is that, you know, uh, is it the foundation of a relationship, a friendship? So would she not, if, if they were just friends, wouldn't she just share with him as a friend? I think that, they, you know, on that level, they need to come together before they, you know, before the, um, the whole thing about marriage and all of that. They need to come together to friends and build, like you said, communication. Is key, and I think you know compromise and all that is you know one of the, the another one of the, the crucial elements inside of a, a marriage or committed relationship. Mel, they already married. He didn't bang her on their wedding. Day. No, 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 but I'm no, but I'm, I'm saying to you, it's still you, you still have to re even though you married, even though you're in a committed relationship, people sometimes forget that they were friends before that, and they want to start acting different. It's like no, the, the marriage is meaning that. No, we, we're committed and we're going to build a life together. But you have to still default in any situation before you say something to your mate or your loved one. You think about that with your friend. Okay. Sometimes I think people in relationships treat their mates, they, they treat them in a way that they wouldn't even treat their friend. They start taking them for granted like that. But I think in that situation, you know, communication is the key. That you choose to communicate with a friend. Okay. Eddie? You muted. We can't hear you. You muted. There you go. <laughs> I had to get a little snack. I'm hungry over here, yo. <laughs> anyway, um, it, it's more than sexual with them that's going on. You know, it, it, when it gets to that point, something like that, I mean, that's really serious. That's what people go to counseling for and all that type of stuff. Because usually... Nine times out of ten, it's more than just the sexual stuff that's going on, that's going on wrong in her eyes in the relationship. You know, um, what suggestions do I have for her? Man, <laughs> it, it's a hard one. That, that's a hard situation to be in. But like Mel was saying, they, they, there's something outside of the sex in their marriage that's creating the atmosphere where they're not, you know, having everything right in the bed. Bless her heart. <laughs> I'm sorry for me to laugh was the look on your face. Listen, I'm just going, I'm going I'm to give you the straight dope on this one, all right? Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to finish out the rest of this show. Um, technically still a virgin. Um, you were a virgin when you married him. He knew that um, you were a, a virgin. Maybe there was a reason why he picked you as a virgin to be his wife. We don't know if there's something going on with him sexually where he can't perform. It may not necessarily have anything to do with you whatsoever. But before you can find out any of that, because you can, we can go through all kind of scenarios in our head on what we think it may be. You need to sit and have right. a real conversation with the man that you say you cannot live without. Because what is it? Can you not live without him or you can't not live without him and not have sex? Because here's the thing. Yeah, you've been having sex with him anyway. So find out what's really going on. Have a real conversation with him. We can't suggest things to do to get you back on track because it doesn't sound like you were ever on that track. You guys were always not sexual. So you going into a marriage and not being sexual it's still the same relationship. So, again, whatever your wants, needs, and expectations were going into this relationship, you need to articulate that to him. You need to find out what's going on with him. And before y'all can do move forward in any way, that uncomfortable conversation needs to take place. All right. So there it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, and affection, go ahead, Mel. affection is a need, not a want. Affection is a need. It's not a one, and if you keep if you if you keep depriving yourself of that affection, you're going to, you know, it's just like somebody that deprives themselves of something that's essential, like water. That at some point your your thinking faculty will be shut down if you if you're not drinking water, and your body <laughs> dirty water just because of water. Period. That's how it is. Okay. So you know, if you keep depriving, yourself, you're going to do something. I'm sorry. 
Oh, I'm choking. Let me say good night no, to the okay. All right. You're all right. Get you I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say right. goodbye to everybody on Facebook mentions right now. We're going back over to YouTube to finish our conversation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at the chat room. <laughs> you laughing at the chat room? Oh. <laughs> Don't repeat that. Do not repeat what the chat room said. Okay. Hey, hey. All right, Eddie. Um, somebody asked in the chat room, why don't you what what are you doing, man? Yo, hold up. I'm back. <laughs> it says do we go. feel like being courted? Do men believe in courting? And and this is not about money. Yes. Repeat, 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 repeat. Do men I mean, do women still like being courted? And do men still court? When it's not about the money. I'll answer for the ladies. Yes, we do. Women do like being courted. Now, females, girls, I don't know. But I can tell you that lady, women like to be courted. Yes. But what I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm old school. school. I, I like courting women. I thought, I, you know, to me, that's the way that you do it. You know what I'm saying? A guy courts a girl and all that type of stuff, and if the wavelengths is right, everything's lined up, then y'all start working on you guys, seeing each other more, that type of stuff. I mean, that, that's how I do it. I'm not used, you know, to this Atlanta stuff down here. I'm not complaining about it, but I'm not used to the Atlanta stuff down here, or or, or any other area that where, it's, where the women are more aggressive and taking over roles of you know, actually pursuing and saying, hey, you know, I like you. I ain't waiting on you to say anything to me. I like to be pursued. I'm just saying. I like to know that you're interested. Don't leave it up to me to guess because I will guess wrong. I always guess wrong. Um, they told me to tell you in the chat, uh, <laughs> Eddie, they said, sit your ass down. You messing up their view. <laughs> you, know, you know how long we've been here conversing with y'all. I had to, you know, get we almost done. We there. almost done. We're I'm having fun. You are good. Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. come back. Sit back so we can see your face now. We don't want to make you don't want to make the viewers mad that they can't. All right, my bad. All right. See you. See you. Is this better? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> give us the, like he was getting ready to sit in court in front of the judge, kind of like. Yes. Okay. Well, all right then. Um, I just want to say, um. We have about eight minutes left. We lost Eddie again. I don't know who keep texting him, but they need to man their beeswax until we done with him. We I, Stop intruding on my time. I don't get much, so let me take advantage of what I have. Um, um. <laughs> let me say this. Um, first thing I want to say to you guys, give me your final thoughts about love and romance, meaning what would you want to leave people with in terms of tonight's topic? I'll start with Mel. And then I'll go to you, Eddie. No, I would just say it's it's uh it's it's all love that you know love is worth it, you know. And then in, in relationships, uh, uh, let let the friendship be the foundation that you move forward with. And 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 and, and if any situation where you feel confused about which way to go, let let your joy be your compass, and have your thoughts, words, and actions aligned with the intentions for your life. And that's my final word. Mel Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Speaking the Melisms that we have grown to know and love here on the show. <laughs> I'll hang out there for a minute, Mel, because I, I got another question <clears throat> that's going to wrap everything up. Gotcha. Um, Eddie, what are your final thoughts about tonight's topic? Uh, ba basically, love is here. It's strong. It's never going anywhere. People stop thinking it's something that it's not love. Is great, but it's also one of the hardest things ever, and it's also one of the most hurtful things ever. That's just life, period. So stop saying "woe is me" and all this other stuff, and this relationship ain't work out. That that's what life is, you know. It, nothing's gonna go perfectly, but you know, don't lose faith. You know, don't don't lose uh, don't lose love. Don't lose believing in love because it's it's real. It's out there. You know, you just live in life, so it's a part of it. Okay. Enjoy it. All right, and then we have <clears throat> a request in the chat room. Um, they want to see if you. Uh, mm. They said, <laughs> I'm "No unclothing, no unclothing." He, he said, "No, he is not taking his shirt off. He's not pulling his shirt up. Nothing. You can't have it." I already know what it is. Wow. I just that, told that, 
that's always following up with a group like there's probably a lot of women there and that always is the scenario they said i said they asked actually said unless he wants to so that was what uh, they, <laughs> they yeah no they just the gonna have to win no. tickets to one of my pool parties or something yes hey uh, I don't even want to talk about would that, that. Would that would that would that be considerate? See that? See, see if we, if, would that be okay, Eddie? If we had a <laughs> show with a female, we had to say, yeah, you know, we wanted to take our shirt off, you know, just to you know, let us see a little something before the uh, takes out. If it's all right. With if y'all following him on Instagram, you can see him with his shirt off. Yeah, right. You know, that is photo I'm shoots just and saying. Stuff. Okay, so speaking of Instagram, can you, you advertise a shirtless picture of me? Didn't you? Huh? Yeah, see? I, I'm not, it was your back. They got it, the idea it was your from. back. It wasn't your front. It was oh, only the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. All right. back. But to that answer the question, if Eddie had asked, of course he could see what color my bra is today. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Mel asked Eddie, that question? He could have saw anything if he'd have asked her. She wide open today. Um. Anyway, <laughs> wow. can you Mel, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and what you have coming up? Uh, well, you know, on social media, it's uh, at the, the love 111 on Twitter. You know, I'm still working with the Instagram. I'm on Facebook under my regular name. Uh, with Periscope and all that stuff, I'm still getting acclimated to all that stuff. And as far as, like, what I got coming up, I mean, from, from IMDB, you know, to, you know, just know that everybody knows that I'm out there and I'm a, a pre- Television, film, you know, stage, all the different things. From the from the big screen to the small screen, all the stages in between. Get at me. Get at me. When you start getting yeah. ghetto. Right. <laughs> all right, Eddie. Get at me. All right. Well, uh, all, all social media is uh, at DrumZone20. That's D-R-U-M-Z-O-N-E 20. DrumZone20. You... You'll find everything from there, uh, other websites, you know, eddiedrummond.coms and all that type of stuff. Um, what I got going on now is uh, We TV, the same TV station that I did, selling it in the ATL. Selling it in the ATL um, last season. They actually uh, were sitting down at a round table because they, they want to do, they want to film me building my new house from the ground up. You know, because I'm a contractor, so I'd be hands-on and all that type of stuff. So they want to bring in some of HDTV's customers, that type of deal. So we're working on that project. And then my nonprofit called Impact 2K um, is launching in about three months. And that's about um, scholarship education for students and parents and teaming them up with organizations that will help them get scholarships. And then we're going to give away two scholarships a year to one, uh, one male and one female high school student. Perfect. So ladies, they are not just good to look at, they're good to know. All right. And I just want to thank both of you because, <clears throat> again, we do Man Crush March every single year because we think it's important. There's a lot of female voices out here in the world. We're being heard a lot. And oftentimes, you guys are not being heard. And we want to let you guys know that we hear you. We see you, and we recognize you, and we appreciate you. So that's why we do, do these this series every single March, and we appreciate you guys being a part of it. We appreciate your transparency. Uh, we, we appreciate you guys putting up with our silliness. Um, and thank you, uh, Mel, for coming back after 15 years, and thank you, Ed, <laughs> <laughs> for your first time. Thank you so wow. much. We appreciate My pleasure. I will see you Saturday night, right? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's just a reminder for those of you guys who are in the Atlanta area. Make sure you go and check me out. I'll be hosting Noir Erotica. It is a sexy art show, <clears throat> and it's going to be some, ooh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if you're clutching your pearls, this ain't the show for you. I'm just saying. Um, and. Also, when you're done hanging out with me over at the House of Blended Ink, you can also go check out Eddie. He has an event on Saturday night at Atlantis Restaurant. Yeah. It's a radio we restaurant. Got, now I can get ghetto with it. We got Atlantis Saturdays, which is a Mediterranean <laughs> restaurant. And then I got Haven Fridays, which is an international night. So I got Haven Fridays and Atlantis Saturdays. 
always a fun time. All right. I would have checked him out this past weekend. I'll tell y'all all about it. Y'all saw it on my Instagram. All right. On behalf of our producer, Cousin Chad, our incredible, invisible intern number three, um, absolutely nothing like a pimp Ferguson. Where the hell is he? And Sporty Spunky Angel, I am Kiki Richardson, the consummate provocateur. Thank you so much for joining us. And always remember, we're uncensored, unscripted, unapologetic. We'll see you next week. Next week is Man Crush March, Men's Guide to Fatherhood and Family. See you next week, guys. Be sound, people. <laughs> we not. Is there anything? Hi, <laughs> Shot Town. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, oh, right now. You just I made her day. Her. Oh, God. Somebody stop her. Don't, don't do it. Please don't do it. You won't be able to get rid of it. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>